Patrick. Together, we are JP Adventures 19. Welcome back to our 50th episode. That's so much. We um, continue exactly where we left off. It's the overhead cabinet and I already put the divider in this one. So it's really nice and sturdy, that whole thing. And now I'm gonna probably gonna put on the lid and the back, but we also want to divide half of the cabinet and put a shelf in, so we might have to do that first. I cut this board out of the same ply and I put it in, it almost fit 100% and then Patrick clamped it in the back so it makes it easier for me to put in the screws. One is already in and I'll do the other three now. I put those four screws in, two here and two on the other side and now I'm gonna attach the back panel like this and I'm using tiny little screws for that. <laughs> it's a 2mm drill bit and we will apply glue before. So I'm gonna put wood glue all around and then press it on, clamp it and put a couple of screws in just so it gets tightened and the glue can dry, uh, can dry properly. And it's done. <laughs> Look at this. We used smaller screws because the fly on the top is only six millimeters thick to attach the top and wood glue underneath. So that will be a really good bond. And then this is what they currently look like from the front. We will cut another lip like this, but not as high and put it in here. Um, just to stop stuff from um, falling out, even though there will be a door. And then, this is it for now. We can't attach the hinges yet because we don't have them. Therefore, we also can't build a door. But the next step will probably be sanding this whole thing down and make the edges fit 100% like here. It's a tiny bit long. All right, the first time we test fit it. <laughs> It's the next day and as you can see the top, this side and the back are all painted. So we can actually mount it now or we will do it later. Um, it's gonna sit here and then we have to put in a bunch of screws um, into the battens right here and into the battens in the wall as well. So it will be really secure, not falling off or anything, even on the worst roads. And since we will create more screw holes in here and you'll see more screw heads, I'll have to um, put some more wood filler on them, like we did here, and then sand it down and then paint over it again. All right, guys, today I'm gonna take you with me step by step building an overhead cabinet. Um, yeah, Patrick's doing some steel work over there and I'm gonna build another overhead cabinet that will go on top of our bed where our head's gonna be and I might even start the kitchen as well. This is the messy cutting list but as you can see I already cut the side walls and the lid and the back wall and the side walls are 12 millimeter ply, the back and the lid because they're just pretty much covering it are six millimeter and now I'm gonna do the floor, the bottom part and some dividers which are all 12 millimeters. So I got the 12 mm ply sheet here and I already um, put in the line so I know where to cut. I'm gonna connect it and get a steel flat bar as a guide and cut it out with a circular saw. The flat bar which is the guide is in place and how I did it, I just held the circular saw up here and then you can see the blade where it's touching the wood and you can exactly see if it's on the line next to the line where it is. I'm trying to find a good angle. And um, maybe better from this side. <laughs> and then I clamped down this side of the flat bar and measured this distance with our little super handy tool. 
it's actually the tool we use the most in general, even for steel work. So you just hold it up like this and then you can see in my case it's almost 3.2 and then you try to get this one the same distance, 3.2, yep, all good. And then you clamp it down on this side and then I would strongly recommend to measure the other side again just to make sure it's, it's all lining up and then you're good to go. is cut out or the bottom of the overhead cabinet and I already sanded it with the orbital sander 240 grit but it's not done yet so um, <laughs> it's a bit tricky because as you can see here I have to put a cutout in it and this cutout is actually for um, our blinds we'll have motorized blinds um, and they go up and down but they have to sit somewhere above the window and our overhead cabinet is right above the window so we just um we're just gonna have this little cutout so it's like a little box that goes into the overhang uh, overhang into the overhead cabinet and that's where the blinds will sit in when they're all rolled up and the little motor as well yeah so we have to do all the cutouts which is so much fun <laughs> It's probably easier if I show you in here. So the overhead cabinets will go from this ladder pantry all the way until the back. And they will sit right above the window. There will be a tiny gap for expansion. Um, next to it. And here will be the motorized blinds. They will, blinds, they will sit on top. So the overhead will look like this that will be the cutout for the blinds it goes like that it's like a little box in the overhead and then the floor is to, um, back to this level comes out and then there's this overhead right here you'll see when once it's assembled it might make more sense but yeah that's what we do for this window also for this window and since there are no ply sheets in this length we have to find a way to join the bottom of the overhead cabinet somehow without being too visible so it really looks nice everything is cut out I did the exact same technique for all the other panels as well and these are the dividers this one and that one and so I just put all the cutouts on it that I'm gonna cut out with the jigsaw this is for the um, insert for the little thing that comes in for the motorized blinds so we'll build like a box in here um, this is a one of those 18 by 35 supports like these same here and this is a 50 by 18 support that's on the top so we can screw into the ceiling so I'm gonna cut these out with the jigsaw and then I need Patrick so we can cut off some more of the 35 by 18 and 50 by 18 with the table saw out of our ply sheet and it's all cut out and we also cut off some 35 and 50 mil white stripes of the 18 mil ply sheet and the table saw and now we only have to cut them to the right length I'm starting to drill some pocket holes so um, these are the side walls go on the outside like this and we'll attach these supports or this lip in the, in the front um, with pocket holes on the inside so you won't be able to see it from the outside and they won't go through this wall so they will definitely be hidden for the rear we'll attach them with pocket holes as well but we'll drill them into the back side and then put it like here and once the back panel is on you won't be able to see that at all and we'll do the same with the top ones so you always pick the side that you can't see anymore in the end and yeah quick and easy when you do 
pocket holes, make sure to apply some glue at the end and then put the side panel on, drill them in, put, um, put the screw in and it will tighten it so the glue can dry and it will be a super strong connection. We are using the crack pocket hole jig and so how to set it up. It shows the millimeters here. That's the thickness of your material. In, in this case, it's this one, the support, which is 19 or 18 mil. So we set it just under 19. And then you got those holes and depending on the width of your um, support or whatever you put in here, you pick the holes, but it's all in the description. Since this is a really narrow bit, we use the two narrow holes to drill through. And then here um, in the light, here you can set up your um, drill, so the drill looks like this and that's how you do it, you put it in here and then this is the stopper and you have, you have to set it up in a way that the end of the thicker part ends where the millimeters are of the sheet that you're gonna attach this thing to, so in our case it's the side walls. So that's 12 mil, so we set the drill to 12 mil as you can see here. This is set to 19 mil and then you just drill through, make sure it's straight so you don't get like angled holes. And yeah, so let's go. You can clamp it in here, it's a quick clamp, it's super easy and yeah, I love it. Ta-da! Look at it! Alright, assembling it was easier with two people and we didn't record, but Patrick helped me because we don't have the jig that can clamp 90 degree angles. So we held it up against it, made sure it's flush on all sides and then we put the pocket hole screws in. And the good thing about pocket hole screws is um, their head is flat and then has this round thing. So it really sits in that groove perfectly and also I'll quickly show you. There's no thread here. Oops. <laughs> There's no thread here. So it really, like even if there's a gap when you tighten it, it really um, pulls it together in the end. So yeah, it worked very well. Um, so we did that on all sides. So you can see. And now I just attach the floor or the bottom with some screws from the bottom here. There's one here, one there. So it really sits nice and tight on here and can't go anywhere. And don't forget, like we did, we put glue underneath. We're using Tight Bond Premium wood glue. And now I'm gonna screw in. I pulled some more screws in here so that the Base is also attached to the side walls. I'll do that on both sides and I think I'm either gonna do the dividers next or the back and the top. We'll see. It's a bit annoying because I have one drill and one impact driver and only one tiny battery. The others are charging and Patrick's using the grinder so he has one of the batteries as well. 
And so I always drill the hole, then I swap it, um, take the drill bit out and then I countersink it. And then I use the impact driver and put the screw in. And these are the screws we're using. It works pretty well actually, they're countersunk heads. But make sure you countersink it first because otherwise the heads can snap off way easier. And like this they really sink in there and then you can put wood filler on top and paint, sand it and paint it and they're gone, they just disappeared. So it's pretty good. Yeah, let's cleaning up. It's a bit cold outside. She looks like a stingray. <laughs> Go stingray, Yele. Patrick just walked by and since he's 100% not recording again, <laughs> I'll show you. He was like, do you reckon it's gonna fit? I was like, I'm not saying anything because he's usually, it doesn't fit at first and he's getting mad. So I just didn't say anything. Now here we go. It fits, Patrick. Yeah, it's surprising. So, so what is it? What are you working on? This is gonna be my little workshop. A workshop, really? Yeah. Did With you get my approval? Everything I need. Did you get my approval for that? I did. <laughs> yeah, lucky you. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this, he's happy. He loves starting new projects before others are done. I love starting new projects when they end up working. Yeah. Next project. <laughs> Which is? So what is your next project, Patrick? The secret. Oh guys, he's taking one of the cameras. Might actually be on tape this time. <laughs> Probably time lapses because that's what we use the GoPro for most. <laughs> Bye. See you later. Back to my work. Good morning. Patrick actually got up early today. He couldn't sleep. We went to bed really late, like past 1 a.m. Because he was still working in the workshop and then I really wanted to finish building that overhead cabinet and it all worked out. I'm gonna show you later. So then at the end it was one until we had dinner and actually could go to sleep. So yeah. Um, so while Patrick started grinding out there and he's working on our brush bars for the box and all the mounts that we need on it. But we'll give you a walkthrough later. Um, I'm making healthy banana pancakes. So... It's a little surprise for him. And now we are gonna test fit our overhead cabinet. It's pretty much done. Look at this. But before I start painting and using wood filler, we really wanna test fit it if it actually fits or it might be too wide, too short. You never know. <laughs> All right, I'm currently working on both overhead cabinets that we already built. So what I've done is I put wood filler on top of this edge of the ply so that in the end you can't see all the stripes anymore and it will be a lot smoother and look nicer. So I'm, I've done that. It has to dry now. We'll let it dry for at least an hour and it's pretty cold. And I have sanded down the wood filler on this one. So you just apply like a thin layer and then sand it down so it's really nice and smooth. There isn't much left on it, but it makes it a really nice finish, finish in the end. Also, now from this side, it looks like this. And then in here, that's the box for our blinds. And um, we test fitted it earlier. It actually fits perfect. We almost don't have to screw it in. <laughs> but we will have to um, put some kind of board on here. Because this is where the back wall will be. And we only want the, the door to open from like let's say around here. So we'll cut a board, screw that in here. And then we will... Um, attach the hinge actually against this board and not against this wall. So there will be less space for Patrick's clothes. And this is what it looks like painted. It's upside down at the moment. And we also painted the other one. And the big one is primed as well, but not painted yet. 
this is for cables um, so we can um, pull them through the cabinet and there will be another big hole in the back for a air intake and then this cutout is for our cable blind box that comes through the steel roof yeah and this is the actually the other board we put in so we can attach the hinge on this one and then we have a six mil board that goes on top of this just to cover up this area Today it's freezing cold and I'm quickly gonna show you Patrick's project big project look at that it is pretty big you could already see some of it in last week's episode so these are the mounting plates for the rear winches for our spare tires plates for lights for cameras for the solar panels for more lights <laughs> And something special is going on here and here that you will see at some point, but we're not going to tell you yet. It's pretty cool. Oh, you're going to make it a surprise now, huh? Yeah, it's so cool. I can't wait. We have to start traveling, Patrick, so we can use it. <laughs> Still have to get our attachments for it. True. <laughs> so what's the plan for today? Um, put solar panels in, drill holes, space them. Um, put solar panels in? Yeah. Fancy, mm -hmm. finally. Yep, and then um, I'm, st I'm working on a little secret project. But and that is secret. <laughs> what's going on here? I don't even know all, what's it about. All secret stuff, yeah. <laughs> no. But yeah, we'll uh, keep you updated on that. that. That one will be uh, an interesting one. And he already asked me for one of the cameras, so he's actually going to be recording today. And Patrick told me, oh, come have a look. Look at this. First solar panel is test fitted with some spacers. I think they are two mil spacers or 1.5. And now he's getting the other panels and we'll try to put them all in and see if this whole construction works. It's amazing. Yesterday we heard about a lamb that doesn't have a mom anymore because it died. So we tried to catch it, catch it and lost pretty much half a day of work. So we're trying to catch up now. Um, and we couldn't catch it. it. It was too fast. But we might be able today. So Patrick got up early and already painted primer on our letters that go on the side of the cap. And our brush bars, solar panel mounts, light mounts, camera mounts and our surprise thing here. Good job Patrick. Well, thank you, yeah. these pieces last night they are pretty much going to be our like branch guards and stuff around the outdoor unit of the AC on the back of the truck they'll also function as like a clamp so it'll be like a little clamping mechanism in there to kind of push the AC down so it doesn't vibrate as much and hopefully won't fall off because the mounts on the AC are obviously made for residential use and not to be driven over corrugations back of the truck and 
then these are our spare wheel mounts, spare wheel holders, and this is for our AC outer unit, and that's what the bars are for. They will literally go like around the outer unit and clap it down so it can't rattle, rattle away. These are our hammock slide out chair mounting bars, whatever you want to call them. Um, what I'm doing now here is pretty much just adding a 2 mil spacer because it's going in 50 by 50 SHS and that wall thickness of that SHS is 2 mil. So to get to the 40 by 40, so it's 48 inside, this is 40, so if you do 40 plus, sorry it's 46 inside, the 50 by 50 by 2. This is 44 outside with these spacers, so it's one mil gap on each side and that's about pretty good for it to slide in and out. So yeah, same thing, these are the load bearing ones, so got a hole strip on these ones and these ones are just for um, when it's slid all the way in and it's aligned and doesn't rattle around when we're driving. So, gonna do a couple more of these on the sides. late night shift <laughs> as usual so we're pretty much um, gonna weld this nut so the bolts on the bottom nuts on the inside I'm just gonna weld these two in there and that way we can put like an uh, these are m8s put like an eye on here and then we can hang our hammock chairs a hammock fairy lights whatever we feel like on here and this will actually be closed up with a little plug, like so. It has this little lip here, so you can just kind of pull it out. Yeah, there we go. All right, so nuts are welded in. And that pretty much just saves you from having to put extra material or something and then having to cut a thread in there. Um, so yeah, makes it pretty simple. I love captive nuts. Just weld it on the other side. When it's inside channel or tube like or SHS like that, it's a bit more difficult, but yeah, we're only going to be threading like eye bolts in my hand and stuff. So these welds will never break off. All right. Last night, you probably would have seen how I welded, spotted these on. So this morning, to make them fit, I just ground the edges around, just to kind of follow the contour of the bars, and cut out the back edge like that, because this is actually a tad bit higher, so it actually got stuck here and it was sticking out the front right here by about that much. Um, so now that works. This whole thing fits. Perfect, and uh, so what I'm doing now, on this side I already started, I wound a nut into, a bolt into there and attached a nut over here, which I'm also going to weld on on the inside, and that way, when it's in this position, it's completely locked, there's no way it's going anywhere. And this is a cone lock, so these won't actually just undo themselves and we actually have little hand screws here so um, we won't have to get out our ratchet and sockets to get these off all right so i'll weld these on now and then i'll put the facing plate on here and yeah then that project should hopefully be done look like this now so it's actually really simple you just put your fingers under here and pull it out once you get to where that first side spacer comes out, that's about right there. That's where we should stop. And then we'll have our little hand screw here. Twist that up, make it nice and tight. And then we can put our little eye in there. I don't know if you can see. 
Yep. So that's the M8 thread in there. You just put an eye in there, twist it in, make sure it's tight, and then you can attach whatever you want to it. Perfect. <laughs> Works well. We have a little very special project that I'm working on at the moment. Um, this is going to be our crane. So we're going to have a crane mounted on the roof. Some of you may have seen the mount that we already have up there. Um, and this is going to be the actual boom part of the crane. So hopefully it works. Uh, let's get to work. Time to drill some holes. These are going to be M12 holes, or M12 volts are going to go in them, so it'll be a 12.5 hole. Never drill exact size hole unless you absolutely have to have it fit, uh, or else you're going to have a lot of trouble lining them up. this week's episode Patrick's secret projects won't be secret um, we will do an entire video about like the crane and everything but we are trying to organize our videos a bit better so it's not always all over the place and yeah I'm gonna do some more woodwork I'm actually currently working on the kitchen um, super exciting and we might be able to mount our brush bars with all the mounts and the solar panels as well since that is painted and yeah so it's a sunny day. Let's get into it. See you all next week.